I want you to know that God loves you and everything is going to be okay. Maria Graber, her husband and daughter, were enjoying some time at a park. As Maria sat beneath a shade tree, an elderly gentleman walked down the hill and handed her a New Testament. He simply said, I want you to know that God loves you and everything is going to be okay. Bob Bennett, a Gideon, had made the decision that day to simply obey God and to pass out some testaments in that part. A short time after receiving the testament, Maria got an alarming phone call telling her that her son had just been shot. She and her family rushed to the emergency room, and the surgeon told them that their son David had less than a 25% chance of living through the night. Well, during that long night of waiting, Maria remembered the testament. She pulled it from her pocket, and as she read the word of God, she remembered the words of Bob. I want you to know that God loves you and everything is going to be okay. Well, David did live. And it turned out that according to the police report, <clears throat> Bob had handed Maria that Bible at the exact moment that her son had been shot. So as a <clears throat> result of God's perfect timing and Bob's simple act of obedience, Maria and her family came to Christ and are serving Christ today. Good morning, I'm Jerry Walling and I represent the Gideons International. The Gideons International is an association of Christian business and professional men located throughout the world. The objective of the Gideons is to win others to the Lord Jesus Christ through personal testimony and personal work by individual Gideons also by placing the Bible, God's holy word, or portion thereof in hotels, hospitals, schools, and prisons. We also place Bibles in the hands of military personnel and distribute Bibles to individuals for personal use. The Gideons is actually just an extension of your church. Gideons take Bibles that local congregations help purchase and place the Bibles in the hands of uh, people in the traffic lanes of life throughout the whole world. Since the establishment of the Gideons in 1908, we have placed over 1.6 billion copies of God's Word uh, in the hands of people that need to know the saving love of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to imagine but Gideons now distribute one million scriptures every five days. That's two copies every second. So every time your heart beats, somewhere in the world, two people are receiving a Bible or a New Testament. In many countries, the Bible are appreciated far more than you can imagine. For example, in Thailand, when children receive a copy of the Word, they bow their heads and reach forth with both hands to receive the scripture. In Guam, the New Testament is used as a textbook in many reading classes because they have no other book. In one city in Guam, there's over 600,000 students waiting to receive a New Testament. Romans 3, 21 through 25 explains that by a wonderful exchange, our sins are now not ours, but Christ. And Christ's righteousness is not Christ, but ours. Christ takes our sins and gives us his righteousness. This amazing story of God's grace is what the world needs. And the world can get this story from this book, God's Holy Word. This is no ordinary book. This book is written by God, and the author of this book comes with a book. I have several books that are autographed by the authors, and those books mean a lot to me. But while the Bible, there is more than an autograph, God's presence comes with the book. 
An example of God's presence coming with the book is Michael Williams' story. Michael was not raised in a very religious family. Uh, they occasionally went to church, mostly on Christmas and Easter. And from Michael's brief exposure to religious things, he got the fuzzy ideal that there is a God and that someday he would probably have to give account to him for the way he lived his life. After Michael graduated from high school, he joined the Navy. And after his training, he was assigned to a ballistic missile submarine. And this submarine stayed submerged for three months at a time. On board the submarine, Michael began to struggle with life. He had many questions about his life and his future. He decided that he needed to read the Bible, but he didn't have a Bible. So he asked his friends, and his friends didn't have a Bible. Then he met a crew member that held up a little book and said to everyone in earshot, hey, a Gideon gave me a copy of this New Testament before we left on patrol, and I don't really need it. If anyone wants it, you're welcome to it. So Michael took the Testament. He read it, and there in the submarine, far beneath the North and Atlantic, he asked God to come into his life, and God did. When Michael's enlistment was up, he went to Bible school. Then he went to seminary and to the university. And Michael has been a Bible teacher in a theological seminary in Michigan for the past 16 years. I would like to share one story with you, one testimony with you that demonstrates how receptive people are to God's word in other parts of the world. In Kenya, Gideons are allowed to share the gospel story and plan of salvation with the, the students when they go in for a Bible distribution. In the United States, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, in Grundy County, where I live, uh, I can still go into the schools. We go into the fifth grades, and, and I can tell them about the Gideons and what the Gideons do and, and give those who want to uh, uh, New Testament, who want one, but in the joining counties around Gundy, in, in Warren, Franklin, and Coffee County, the Gideons are not allowed to go into the classroom and distribute Bibles anymore. Jim Lake shared this story uh, with uh, what took place during a school distribution in Kenya. Uh, tightly packed into the Christ hallway were 120 children that heard the gospel message. New Testaments were then distributed to each student and Following the distribution, those who wanted to receive Christ were asked to step forward to, with a, to join a group of Gideons there in the hallway. As the children began to approach, Jim asked that any who were not believers and who did not want to accept Christ to, to please leave the hallway. As they departed, only those who wanted to accept Christ and those who were already believers remained. Standing in the midst of 28 children, one 12-year-old girl to his left began to sing, How wonderful is your word, O Lord. How beautiful is your name, O Lord. Over and over, the believers would sing these words as precious young people stepped forward to receive Christ into their heart. My wife, Judy, and I, we spent <clears throat> two weeks in Kenya a couple years ago, and from our experience there with working with the young people and, and seeing how the things operate, it's just so easy for us to visualize how this could happen. You have heard me tell earlier that many, how many Bibles uh, the Gideon International distributes, uh, you know, one million copies every five days. That number is impressive. However, beyond the numbers, beyond the performance goals and the good work are the peoples whose lives are changed for eternity when they read a Gideon Place Bible or New Testament. The people who have access to God's powerful word rise up from their pits of despair, revised, renewed, and restored. The fact that the word of God reaches suffering people at the point of their need and does the work that nothing else can do cannot be measured or charted. 
These occasions are statistically, unqualifiably, and absolutely priceless. The Gideon ministry can come up with all kinds of goals and receive more funds to print and distribute millions of scripture. However, absolutely nothing can match God's work in the hearts and lives of men, women, boys and girls through the living word. Mere numbers are not the force that drives us to achieve our goals. We only serve as an extension of his church as we show God's love and grace. Isaiah 55, 11 reads, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Nothing shall return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I send it. The Bibles that you help Gideon's purchase change his lives because the author of the book comes with the book. Not everyone is able to, you know, preach the word to others. Not everyone is able to go to a foreign land and, and tell others about God. However, there are two very important things you can do. First, you can pray. Pray for funds to purchase Bibles. And pray for countries to open their doors so that we can be able to distribute the scripture. And second, you can donate whatever funds you're able to give to help purchase the scriptures. Gideon Hotel Bibles cost $5. A, a New Testament can be placed for $1.25 each. Even if you can provide just a few copies, those might be the copies that changes someone's life. I would also like to remind you of the Gideon Card Bible Program. Uh, the in-memory cards and other cards are a great way to honor people while sending God's word across the, the world. And I have placed some of the cards in the foyer there. And uh, if you don't have a rack to get them in, I'll be glad to, to get a rack for you. And I would like to congratulate you and praise you for uh, your you know, beautiful church here and great congregation and all the youth that you have. It is so important that our churches um, teach, you know, God's word and, and, and base our, our teaching on that. Um, it is really, you know, uh, amazing to, to see some of the, the statistics and things that are happening in our church today. Um, the fact that... Uh, as the young people are, are raised in church, um, after they go off to school or go on to make a career, those are the ones that are leaving the church today. Um, I'm a, a Methodist, and it's true in the Methodist church as well as in the Baptist church and most of the, the mainland churches. The, the, the people that we're receiving into these churches today are the, the younger adults that were not raised in church. They're the ones that the church is growing. So a lot of things is, is changing in the world. But whenever we have a strong program here like what y'all have got and teaching the, the children and bring them up in the right way, that's, that's just a priceless list thing, and it needs, needs to be continued. And I uh, praise you for having such a beautiful church in this community and praise the 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 saints and the pious that established this and got it started and worked with it. I'm sure it's many of your parents and, and grandparents that did that. So I want to thank your pastor for uh, allowing me to present the Gideon story today. And um, I thank you, congregation, for your support of, of our mission. I can assure you that, that every cent that you give goes to purchase or distribute Bibles. Um, as a Gideon, uh, we may give Bibles away in our own county or in our own town or on the other side of the world. And all of that expense involved in, in getting to those places to distribute the Bibles is taken care of by the Gideons. All the expense of running the Gideon Association throughout the world is covered by the Gideons. 
every cent that you give goes to buy Bibles or ship Bibles to, you know, a foreign country. So thank you for your being able to hear our story today, and I pray that your participation will prove to be a, a great blessing to you. I'll turn it over now. Remember, Johnny and Sharon will be at a four years.